Welcome to Revive Mercy Podcast. We're nearing the end of 2021. And the theme again this year is it's not the end, finding hope. I feel a true test of a friendship isn't agreeing on everything or liking the same teams or, or, or even um, the truest test is really when it rains and it pours and you feel that you are not alone, that the person is there present with you. Mm-hmm. I'm returning with, my, uh, with a guest, a uh, returning guest. Um, uh, he's been here many of times, and I think, I hope that I've been as supportive to him as he has been for me, and um, welcome, Sebastian. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, so. Awesome. It, Thanks for having us on, man. Yeah, it's just, um, it's funny how um, uh, how friendships work, you know, how, mm-hmm. you, how you build them, and you kind of, you know, but at the same right. time, yeah. it's also, uh, I think that's a, that's a, that's a natural of it all because it's not us always agreeing or even seeing yeah, that yeah. eye. It's just going through those rainy days, knowing who's there when, when it, you know, when when the pain or whatever has happened, uh-huh. here, that they're yeah. still there listening correct, to. You. Correct, correct. Well, I'm just, you know, I think that's that's wonderful. So thank you, Sebastian, for taking the time to be present with us today <laughs> and share your insight. Of I course, sh- of course, man. I want to share a disclaimer for those who are watching and listening around the world. Um, 1-800-273-8255 is National Suicide Prevention Lifeline for mm-hmm. us in the United States. But I do encourage all those listening, wherever you are and around the world, well, even if you're in the States, support looks very different for each mm-hmm. individual in recovery. I start off with a quote. I, I use this quote um, for another episode and um the person who told me about desmond tutu i felt was very interesting about the part the apartheid and how much mm-hmm. forgiving mm-hmm. through all the atrocities yeah did. yeah but this quote uh i'm gonna it says hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness what comes to mm. mind sebastian man first of all uh just you know you, you hit a couple of things man we appreciate your friendship just want to rep Revive the streets. You know, 100 so, episodes. 100 episodes. You're probably at one, 140 now? 130? 140-ish. Or? Yeah, I think you're Wow, right. already. It just feels like it was yesterday that you hit 100. So congrats on that, man. Uh, super blessed by your ministry and the conversations you've had. But, but going to this, right? Um, hope is being able to see that there's light despite all of the darkness. I think that's that, that's probably a... Uh, a accusation that people have for people that are of faith right that yeah. it's kind of like your 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 that hope is, is based on it's like fool's gold right you think it you know and it, it's just, it's like a weak person's faith uh, a weak person's uh desire to have faith but in reality i mean at, at the core of everyone right we have a lot of these core same issues whether that be fear uh desire for safety and security and I think many people have hope, whether they say it or not, in something, right? They hope in their elected leaders, they hope in their family, they hope in their values and principles, or they hope in their 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 their, their faith and the, the higher powers that be that they believe in. And so, yeah, I, I truly believe this is this is 100%. Um, for many people that don't have hope, right, where there seems to be no good sight, good thing in sight, rather, no matter how far it is, right, it's hard to keep going. But um, I, I, I truly believe that, you know, it just from a lot of us during this time in the pandemic, um, the surge of the, the Delta variant, 
mm -hmm. everything else that's been going on in terms of divisions and you name it, right? We've, we've been going through that over the last 20, uh, year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, but being able to have to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel as the, as the saying glow goes right glows i guess as the saying goes <laughs> yeah. um but being able to see that there is light despite all that darkness right so choosing to believe that it will get better at some point and for us right again in our faith we know that if that doesn't happen in this life it will happen when when we believe that that jesus comes back we'll be going to heaven yes. so that's you know that's the hope that we have right at the end yeah. of the day um at least that i have right in my yeah. faith and in your faith as well so yeah and like, you know, I, I said before, um, you can't really have hope if there's always certainty. So I feel oh, that kind yeah. of that whole thing, that whole, and you know, strength is funny. You know, we look at the underdog stories, you know, those sports mm -hmm. stories, they're always kind of inspiring because strength, when you, ha when you have the chips stacked in your favor, or when everything, all the support is consistent, it, it's not as inspiring, though yeah. it is positive, you know, but However, strength, as I mentioned, can be a, played with a lot of uncertainty mm -hmm. when you don't have all the answers. Yeah. When yeah. everything goes wrong, when that person is trying to get to their car, everything's iced on the floor, and they barely yeah. make it. Um, when you, when you, when you might be have made a mistake. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of times we may have made, made mistakes or caused mm -hmm. a lot of pains or lost someone or something or unexpectedly when all mm -hmm. you can say at the end of the day is i'll try again tomorrow you mm -hmm. know that takes a lot of strength and yeah in faith it, i feel it gets that consistency that helps you through that and i feel um that's for me that's inspiring when it comes to strength mm -hmm. because yeah yeah uh when you have a positive it's, it's not i'm not minimizing having a positive support i do encourage those who are listening mm -hmm. To find those positive supports, whether your church or family, find something that you do right. positively. Right, right. Um, but you know, this time of year is hard because you know it's uh, a lot of times it's a reminders of what you lost or what you don't have. So yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, how do you define strength when yeah. your own personal experience and in others? You know. Uh, yeah, uh, from from my own self, I think it's. Uh, I mean, for me, you know, again, uh, being a pastor and and, and working in the faith realm, obviously in, in the world we live in, but um, I think strength for me really is it's something that I I don't tend to have, and that's why I have to look for something a higher power, mm -hmm. in my case, God, to be able to provide it. Um, there's a there's a portion in in the scripture in the Bible that says that His strength, that God's strength, is made perfect in my in our weakness, right? So it's that it's at that point when I come to my end where I realize I can't keep going, that I, I, I am able to plug in and connect to someone that does have the strength to keep me going, right? So in my sense, I would define it more as like a supernatural thing in the sense of uh, uh, someone is with me in, in, in my journey, mm -hmm. giving what I don't have, right? Providing yeah. what I don't. And, and in, in other people, I think you kind of see that, you know, I think sometimes we'll, in this conversation, we'll, t we'll coin terms such as like resiliency. Mm, yeah. Where you would look at the story and you'd be like, I don't know how they made it out of that situation, but they did, right? Whether mm -hmm. they had a faith that they believed in or they just, it was self determination or, or providential or something that happened, right? But resiliency and, and, and courage are some of the terms that you hear there. Um, so that's how I would define it, right? Uh, 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 these opportunities. And I think we see strength, um, not necessarily, and I think it's, it's more of these, and maybe I, we, we hear lots of times in the underdog stories too yeah i don't really think the strength it's also can be seen sometimes in how ha people have power and overpower others yeah. to accomplish what they want but i think true strength is that that as you said earlier right no matter what you face in life you're able to keep moving forward and mm -hmm. i think it, it all it takes you know sometimes you think that strength is only seen when you make these huge steps <laughs> forward or no. but i think just getting up right as we said yeah knowing that tomorrow is another day and hey we'll face it tomorrow as it comes yeah. just making that one mental decision and choice mm -hmm. to i'm going to get up tomorrow and get mm -hmm. moved forward i think is is an idea of strength as well i i do also you know we talk about uncertainty a lot and i love that this haunting quote from jeff foster he says leave everything undefined mm -hmm. including yourself befriend uncertainty fall in wow. love with mystery kneel at the altar of not knowing <laughs> give your yeah. questions time to breathe and wow. the answers will find you wow it's, wow, wow. <laughs> it's like but for me uh, i think it's hard for a lot of us to do that because i yeah. feel we try to latch on to some certainty yeah. and obviously it's understandable we have those who we love those we want to protect and all that stuff and yeah man yeah this is this is a powerful quote i've, I've really been 
wrestling with this idea you know um we live in such a time of so much information where you're expected to know everything right mm -hmm. and now and if you don't there's no excuse and yeah and i think it's important to be informed in, 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 in a variety yeah, of, of issues okay. right um but that's why we have also professionals and people that have yeah. dedicated their lives to study certain things that you can turn to and say hey i trust what you say because you spend so much time but there is this beautiful element i think even in faith where it's it's kind of like you're saying it's there's a kind of requirement right in faith yeah. for you not to know all things because that's kind of the realm of god and you're here that's where faith comes in yeah that's we're trusting and, and i think there is there, many times we and i think now in this time of so much information saying you don't know or you're okay with not knowing mm -hmm. um obviously in certain things not not obviously, yeah of course right? but but especially in the faith realm right people ask questions yeah, as a pastor and hey what does this mean or why would god do this or that and i'm like hey i don't know and I think that's the best position to have sometimes that it's a humil humble position where you're mm -hmm. saying, hey, I, I know there's limits to what I'm able to understand about life or mm -hmm. about why things happen or how things happen. And that is left up to God. And, and, and I have to be OK with not having all the answers. Right. Yeah. And like it says, right, leave leaving things undefined, give undefined, giving your questions time to breathe and the answers you will find. Right. So knowing that you're not going to know all things. Mm -hmm. as much as you try to right and, and mm -hmm. being okay with not knowing everything uh, i think is is, is is important i think it also allows you to process things like we mm -hmm. like a lot of times like for instance if i'm not you know i'm not exposed to certain topics mm -hmm. i need time to kind of understand them and sometimes yeah. we don't give each other or ourselves enough time and that also goes with healing you know yeah. we go through yeah things that hurt us but a lot of times we're trying to rush towards healing but healing mm -hmm. is that process that you're in right now yeah <laughs> you know right. it's that process that we're all in in certain ways you know loss um, comes in all the shapes and sizes you know um and you know anniversaries whether it's something that you know that has happened tragically or it could just be a birthday or even mm -hmm. if they're closer to you it's, it's even harder yeah. because every significant day that mm -hmm. you remember yeah. would be hard yeah. so i i know yeah, um true. i just yeah. want to also segue to this idea you know we're talking about uncertainty and i know some people are like well well you know i you know there's a lot of things that it's not that i don't want you to you know i encourage those who are listening to find you know, like resources mm -hmm. find what works but at the same time there's things that you won't know and sometimes things may think that they're like static they're like no not static but paused in life you know you're mm -hmm. just like well nothing's changed but doesn't mean that you're not making steps forward doesn't right, mean that you're right. that that things are the fact that you're here the fact that you're present and um and what have you found um to have helped someone when it comes to uncertainty when they have little to no hope when they're like yeah, you know well, what yeah. what's the point and like this mm -hmm. is a scary topic because a lot of times people are like well you know one of the biggest things i've heard and actually uh -huh. there's been, there's been um uh research is that hopelessness is the root cause of a lot of suicides oh, uh, or the majority yeah. so yeah. hopelessness yeah. so we're talking about finding hope so we're mm -hmm. hoping to find hope so what have you found to help you or someone even though they don't know what's going to happen be okay with it mm -hmm. and, um you know what, what 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 have you seen yeah i mean in, in the faith i'll give you i'll give you two answers in the faith realm like i said uh giving that having that there knowing that there's a higher power mm -hmm. that knows what's going to happen and is with you right at right that is comforting you and saying hey it's going to be okay there's going to be resolution there's going to be a day where it turns in your favor whether in this life or the next i think is one answer where a lot of people find faith you know strength to keep going and saying hey well you know i lost my dad we talked about this i believe mm. to covid last christmas so i have hope that i will see him again when yeah Jesus yeah comes back right and so that keeps me going right that mm. if, if i believe to a different faith where i don't see him again i might be in a different state right I yeah might exactly be, but knowing that i can't i will see him again um because of what god has done and, and and because he's coming soon and then i'm i'm good but another thing too that helps i think is just a community of people yeah. that have been through what you are going through um so same thing for my situation you know talking with others that have lost loved ones mm -hmm. maybe a father just like me right talking to another son that has lost, lost a loved one i can relate and they can share hey this is what helps what has helped me this is what i have gone through this is the, the therapy and what i've learned in, in therapy 
And then at the same time, the community that I can give towards others, right? I have a couple of friends that their fathers are dealing with can't with with uh, COVID at the moment. They haven't passed, but they're going through those stages. And I'm like, hey, I understand what that feels like, the uncertainty, the not knowing what if he's going to be alive or what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. So being able to have that community, I think, is crucial, um, whether you have a faith or not, of knowing that someone is there with you. And many times we think we have to say things in those moments. And sometimes yeah. the best thing you can say is nothing. Is that your presence <laughs> is, is powerful enough. So that's the two things that I've seen, right? My faith that gives me hope but mm -hmm. also my community that supports me and strengthens me during that time and together it's like hey we're gonna move forward together right so plug yeah. it into a community where you can do that i do like um you know with the whole faith um my whole thing is that god is constant as a child you see your parents are like mm -hmm. they're like you know they're stoic you know they're those people that are constantly there so in my faith when i think of god he's like doesn't change and that's comforting for me because everything changes. So uh, they're also, you know, even good change is stressful. <laughs> yeah. Any true. kind of change any is stressful. Change, any kind of changes, yeah. It's stressful. And on, on the other part, when you're talking about um, having a community, I, I, I've seen that so many times where you get, four, I don't know, as an example, four women who've been, you know, hurt really bad or abused or domestic violence. And you put them in a room, they share their story with each other. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes tangibly outside yeah. that circle or outside that room, but they feel better. And sometimes, most times, they do better. Why? Like, if you're a rational yeah. person writing things down, you're like, it doesn't make sense. But it does It does yeah, make but... sense in a lot of ways. A lot of us who are in pain like to be heard, um, like to know that they're not alone through all this. Yeah, it's it's a it. lot. It's a lot. You know, yeah. Thomas Edison... Um, um, says sometimes uh, our greatest weakness lies in giving up the most certain way to succeed is always to try one more time um, he, I, he tried he tried for sure <laughs> yeah he did. and like it, it also you know it comes to jokes uh, i'm joking but like this is one word i had to throw this in it's from indonesia it's a jays it says a joke so terrible and not and so unfunny that you can't help but laugh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, yeah, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Anyone from Indonesia watching this, you could just we apologize. Yeah, just but... destroy my yeah. my. No, that's good. Case. I mean, I, that's so true. <laughs> it, it, I think some of the the category of jokes that fall into that category, the type of jokes that fall into the category is dad jokes, right? They're oh just yeah, like, they're like the worst. They you know, make like, every ah, kid cringe. Uh, or like, why you, you here? Sometimes you can't <laughs> but laugh because it's like, oh, that's just so painful. They're usually yeah. very punny too. You know, mm -hmm. that's usually the the, the ingredient kind of, the, of a the, bad the joke. There, right, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But um, <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> going back to faith, King faith, like we've been talking about, provides a deeper experience. Mm -hmm in hope and uh, for me from my experience and it's just for me uh finding purpose in your recovery whatever the healing is like mm -hmm. i said many times especially a substance use it can't just be not using right it, it right. can't just be uh, and also i feel it holds more weight like even in, in when you're working out or you're mm -hmm. trying to get more fit if it's just to look better it's fickle it's like what it mm -hmm. what what happens mm -hmm. when it doesn't matter to look better or do you just want to be healthier because you want to right, be right, there right. for your loved ones later on in life so i feel even in that yeah. those people who may not be faith based or not not, not familiar i think um that illustration is a little bit more helpful um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what has been your experience with your own faith and uh, you kind of answered this but yeah going even deeper um now that you know this is december mm -hmm. and um this is like a lot of times for a lot of people a very hard month even yeah. no matter when someone uh, you lost or even if you lost your job or you lost maybe whatever you're financially the burdened yeah. or yeah. you're just yeah. your life has shifted drastically you know that's this good. is like that's pinnacle mm -hmm. a lot of times even if you're not faith-based a lot of things you know new years new beginnings everything's like mm -hmm. you know tabula rasa you're trying to start fresh trying to do things better at the end of you know, beginning of next year so what's what would you say has been yeah. like that hasn't been mentioned or even we want to emphasize more yeah you know and um i think having that faith and having the hope as i mentioned before faith in in a higher power in, in god that that will provide that restoration and bring back that which you have lost in life 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think it not only does it encourage you and embolden you to keep going forward in your journey, but it also helps, I think, in the healing process because you know that you have that hope and faith that you'll see the loved one you've lost again. For example, for me, right? I know in December when it comes around, it's going to be hard. Uh, Christmas is my favorite holiday. And so my dad died on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. So, but, but having that hope, I think it gives me courage to really uh, look deep and ask those questions and really process, right? Rather than running from the pain, really working through it, you know, knowing, kind of knowing the end of the story, right? Like if you compare yeah. this to a book, you know how the story ends, right? I know I'll see my dad again. So I can kind of work through those chapters mm-hmm. in between with more confidence, right? I know yeah. how it ends, we'll be reunited. So let me work how that looks now. How does life look now without a dad, right? What does that mean for this, this and that? Yeah. So I think knowing the end of the story, having that hope helps me to be more confident in, in my healing process, right? And, and really asking those questions. Why am I feeling like this? Um, what can I do about feeling depressed today? What are some you know techniques or or mm-hmm. things I can do to really uh, help my mind at this moment that really feels to be in a, in a rut because of this state that I'm in. And so I think, you know, just that, that's how faith and hope really plug in to not giving, not just giving you the confidence and to move forward, knowing that you'll be reunited with, you know, with the loved one, but also to do the deep work now of, of just processing through that. And, and I think, you know, different people have to, you know, some, some of my family members will be like, you know, we just, we, they don't want to do some of the certain things that we used to do as a family because mm-hmm. dad's not here. And I kind of see it the opposite. I kind of see it now. I'm looking at, you know, what the legacy of my dad is. And I'm like, you know, he would have wanted for us to keep yeah. living and enjoying life. So I'm not going to, you know, maybe there's some things that, hey, we keep that as this tradition that was just for dad. But I still want to do those things that even we did with dad, even if he's not here, continue to do that and then continue to live life because I know that's what he would have wanted. Right. So that's, yeah. you know, different people will process differently. Some will be like, I don't want to celebrate Christmas anymore because it's mm-hmm. too hard. That's fine. Yeah. But for me, I think I'm gonna, I am gonna. have a new appreciation for Christmas now that um, that not I mean, obviously it's sad, but it's just remembering the life of my of my dad every Christmas. And I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. this is an awesome time to really, you know, highlight what Jesus did in coming to be born as a baby for Christmas, but also to remember the, the great dad I had. So I, that, I don't know if that answers the question, but that's kind of yeah. how faith and hope, you know, not just in the long term, in the end, but also in the now, how that can really play a big role. I really, I really like what you said, and also it, it's about safe places. Sometimes that, and also uh, you get that in a home, and a lot yeah. of times that your community could be that home, your church could mm-hmm. be that home, your friends. It, it's it's a wonderful healing moment when you you're not just living in the house. I think that there's a lot of people, many people, when you're yeah. like what you were describing, and I, I myself have experienced like, oh, I know this coping skill, I know this stuff, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's like you're you're constantly where um, for me personally, that is helpful, but also uh, building on the foundation of what uh, what can. Mm-hmm. Um, can help you know yeah, help me yeah. be okay with the uncertainty help me kind of marinate in that and have that community that yeah, hey yeah. this is okay that you're not okay you know that you have a supportive family and i feel that 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 provides the healing sometimes when you're in a home you're not in a rush to leave <laughs> you know what I mean? mm-hmm. you're, just, you're just there you know a lot of times when we're rushing and through recovery or rushing rushing to the pain you, mm-hmm. we do these impulsive things but when you're in a safe place and you're allowed to heal, I feel uh, home yeah, can be yeah. that 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 mm-hmm. base, that foundation. Any final thoughts you would like to share with those listening today? Yeah, just um, know that you're not alone. And I know that doesn't erase the pain that you're feeling, right? Mm-hmm. It'd be nice to know, oh, I'm not alone. Okay, I don't feel hurt anymore. I don't feel mm-hmm. desperation or confusion or despair or just that I've been in a, in a, in a deep dark in darkness this whole time. But... But I think there's a, there's just a beautiful thing in just knowing that there's there's many of us, mm-hmm. and I say majority of us that are dealing with some sort of of grief, some sort of loss, like Robert was saying, whether that be your job, uh, loss of relationships, loss of loved ones, loss of normalcy of what how things used to be, because that's clearly not how things are now. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a, everyone's going through loss, and so just how can we? Uh, grieve and mourn and process that loss together, right, rather than going at each other's throats as we see and fighting and attacking each other, how can we work together to bring healing to ourselves and to each other and to our community? Um, and for, you know, obviously as we've mentioned in, in our conversations, the best way for us to do that has been through our faith, 
yeah. and, and finding tangible ways uh, of how to bring healing, of putting others first, of loving others, of being under, understanding to other stories and listening, um, and then understanding the power that is in our faith of knowing that we'll we'll be reunited with those that we have lost, and and we serve a we have a we believe, we believe in a God mm -hmm. that, that loves us and wants the best for us, that wants to bring that redemption and that restoration and healing into our lives today, but also at the end of the story. And so that's yeah. kind of the things I think just the, the yeah. encouragement. You know, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. You're going through this, um, and like your your title says, it's not the end. You know, it's 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 merely just part of the journey, part of the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, this doesn't this this darkness as 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 dark as it is, right? The Bible says that. Uh, mm -hmm. What does it say? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible. There's a verse in the Bible that says, um, "I just went blank." Uh, I guess darkness may may last through the for the night, or or sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm sorry, I just went yeah. blank. No, no, it's. Um, yeah, sorrow may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So there will be a morning. There will be a, a new day. Uh, and so the, hopefully you are encouraged by that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I you know, uh, Maya Aglu, I'm just going to paraphrase, but she says, people are not going to remember what you said. They're not going to remember what, any of that. They're going to yep. remember how you made them feel. Feel. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. I'm saying uh, I'm encouraging those who are listening all around the world. You know, a lot of times we don't know the context people are going mm -hmm. through. You don't know the pain that they're going through, and they're just maybe they're probably struggling right now. But at the same time, um, you don't need to know, have the right words. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to say anything. Like we said, just be present and. Still remember how that you made them feel. Thank you, yeah. Sebastian, You're for welcome. agreeing you. to be a guest with us today. Of course, of course. I just want to share with those um, to remember that you can find all things Revive Ministries in the various platforms, Revive Ministries at health.com. This is goodbye from Revive Ministries, living with the last quotes from Neil, Dale Carnegie. It says, Most of the important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when they seem to be no hope at mm -hmm. all.